what if they were gone now? The person that you texted just a minute ago, the person that you called on the way in here, they can be gone in one instant. Do we really comprehend that? Do in this fast-paced world of head down, working, busy, I know I've been there. I know I have. Just forget about the people in our lives. We get so busy. But we need to cherish the moment, and we have to cherish the people in our lives. They could be gone tomorrow. They could be gone now. You don't want to be standing on this side of the grave and wishing you had said more to somebody. I can tell you the exact step that I was on on our front porch when she uttered the words, Stephanie Brandon has died. I couldn't move. Imagine hearing those words at any time in your life, let alone 12 years old. I, I was getting ready for a Halloween party. And my world just shattered in front of me like broken glass. I remember the trees just kind of in slow motion stopping. I remember not being able to really hear anything. It was like a movie. And just everything slowed down. She took my hand into the car, and we went into the car, and we picked up a friend of Brandon's. I, I remember seeing her crying as we were driving to the hospital, but I don't even remember hearing her. I was such in a state of shock and so completely out. I didn't know what to do. We got to the hospital, and I remember walking down the hospital hallway, seeing my parents running to me, tears in their eyes, and just scooping me up with the biggest hug possible. My life changed immediately. My mother was thinking about the dump truck driver that broadsided and killed my brother. And she couldn't even imagine, her and my dad could not even imagine the guilt the heaviness that he might feel that he had killed somebody. You never wanted this to happen. Can you extend that kind of grace to somebody? Maybe you can do it today with a text message. But do you realize that by forgiving somebody or showing someone grace, it actually sets the prisoner free? But do you know who that prisoner is that's set free? Not the other individual, it's you. Now, over the time that after Brendan and died, my brother Cam and I got incredibly, incredibly close. Because we realized that, hey, one of us could be gone tomorrow. I mean, we learned such early on how important our lives were. But Cam was struggling big time. You know, we both struggled with the loss of Brandon. But I think for Cam it was even harder because Brandon and Cam were best friends. They played tennis together every single day, doubles, singles. I mean, it was everything. They were attached at the hip. And so for Cam, it became very, very, very hard. And I think it was very hard for him, too, because as a guy, it's like, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Don't tell your buddies that you're struggling. Even Don't even show them a little bit of the chink in your armor, right? And so Cam was struggling to the point where it actually was full-blown depression. And he was struggling very, very badly. Now, I didn't really even fully understand the extent of it. And Cam was in college. He was 19 years old. He was playing tennis, as you can see, an incredible tennis player. Playing at UW-Green Bay in Wisconsin on scholarship. Was the guy that every guy wanted to be, and the, really the guy that every girl wanted to date, right? He looked like the poster child of perfection and, and all is good, right? But he was struggling inside big time. 
It was the day before his 20th birthday. It was August 11, 2002, and Cam and I had a night plan. We were gonna hang out after he got off of work. We were gonna have like our little movie night, right? And just hang out and just be brother, sister, just, you know. But my mom came to me and she said, Stephanie, we need to uh, probably go see your aunt up in Woodbury, Minnesota. And my aunt at that time had been diagnosed with a brain tumor. Yes, this is, this is real, that all of this, it, at such a young age, right? And so we didn't really know, you know, when we would see her again, because with brain tumors and, and with any cancer, it can be very, very tricky to say, might they live two years, might they live two months, two days, 10 years? At this time, though, it was a kind of a grim diagnosis, and so we realized that we didn't have much time with her. And so I said, but I have these plans with Cam, but okay, I'll go, you know, of course, I've got to, I want to see my aunt, I, I don't know if I'll see her again. So we went up to Woodbury, it was great to see her, got to see my cousins, got to see my uncle, and then we came back home. And Cam's car was home, and we thought he was still gonna be at work, but the lights were on, I'm like, okay. So we get home, and I'm talking to my girlfriend, I'm so excited, we get, I'm gonna go hang out with her, just, you know, go out, watch a movie, do something. And I run upstairs on the second level to my room, and I'm getting ready, and I'm on the phone, and I'm talking to her. I hear the loudest four screams, blood-curdling screams from the basement. I don't ever want to hear those again. It's so loud. My friend on the phone can hear it. It's my mom screaming because she found Cam dead. He had taken his life. I ran downstairs and I, I Mom, what? No, Mom, please don't, please don't, please don't tell me what I think it is, please. She said, Stephanie, call 911, Cam's dead. He's dead. Hearing those words again in five years before I'm even 18 years old. I'm not even a senior in high school yet. Again, that night's a blur. I was so in shock, I didn't even, I literally didn't shed a tear that night because it was so, are we doing this again? It was like, we almost know how to. I remember waking up the next day in a friend's, we were at a dear friend's house. We stayed overnight there. We were not staying in our home. I remember waking up and going, this is reality. This is real. Cam is gone. Over the years, it took its toll on me. I thought I was doing well over the years after that. I went through college, it was fine, but there were lots of tears, there were lots of struggles. And little by little, the stress, the anxiety, the cortisol that was running through my body and my veins got to be a lot. And I finally went to a professional and she said, Stephanie, you have to take care of yourself. You have to. If you do not take care of yourself every single day, you're just gonna suffer even more. When you suffer, all the people around you suffer. I don't even know if you realize that. Do you realize how big of a, of a massive ripple effect that we have, the people around us, our kids, our spouses, our significant others, our workmates, everybody, right? It's not just us, we are not an island. And so she said, what are gonna be your two non-negotiables? And I said, what, the, what is that? She goes, what are gonna be your two non-negotiables every single day? that you commit to doing to be better and to be healthy. This is going to be months worth of getting better and investing in like money in a vending machine, right? And I said, okay, well, I know the two things that will really help me. I know working out, being committed every day to working out and also meditation. For me, my mind was going in a million different ways 
And you might be thinking, oh, good, is she very Eastern and very Zen? Well, a little bit Zen and also very high strung. <laughs> but even just more so calming and centering myself. So every day, at least five to 20 minutes, I don't care what, I don't care if I do not have time. I make time, I get up earlier. Oh man, there are some days when that alarm clock goes off and I want to give it, you know that finger that I want to give it. <laughs> I do not want it to go off, right? But I realize that I have to. Cherish the moment, ladies. You don't know when you will ever be on this side of the grave and wishing you had said more or extended more love. Get rid of that pride. It's nasty, but you can. And extend some grace and love. And don't forget, those non-negotiables will make you even more of an amazing woman that you want to become. It's so nice to see all of you. It's great to see all your shiny faces. And I would love to chit-chat with any of you afterwards. Thank you so much for coming today.